September 11th, 2001, the United States is attacked by terrorists and the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration makes the decision to shut down its airspace, forcing over 4,000 planes to land at the nearest airport. Inbound flights from Europe are diverted to Canada, and in a heartbeat, 38 planes with 6,579 passengers were stranded in a remote town in Newfoundland. The locals opened their hearts and their homes, hosting this international community of strangers and unexpected camaraderie taking place in these extraordinary circumstances. Well, the critically acclaimed and Broadway smash hit Come From Away, just recently celebrating its second anniversary, tells their remarkable true story. Take a quick look. And we are delighted to have joining us now the Tony-nominated writers of Come From Away's book, music, and lyrics, Irene Sankoff and David Hine. It's so nice to have you both here. Thank Our you. pleasure. My wife and I went to see it. And the opening scene, the opening number, and you hear a couple of the drum beats, and then it's Welcome to the Rock. On the northeast tip of North America, on an island called Newfoundland, there's an airport. And next to it is a town called Gander. And it's such a creative way of telling the story with this great driving music behind it. How do you come up with something like that? We were sort of uh, freed by the fact that we were working in Canada and, and developing it at first for a, a college out there. So we yeah. didn't have to adhere to any of the rules of musical theater. We just... Isn't that interesting? That that interesting? Maybe Unfettered. high schools would yeah. be forced to do it. We maybe. just said, I mean, I, I kind of thought, you know, this won't be done in the States. This is going to be a Canadian story. Okay, so then let's just tell the story the best way we know how and not go back to the rules that were set up, you know, nearly a century ago. Like, let's just do what works for this story. And along those lines, I mean, bringing the Newfoundland music onto stage with these instruments that have never been on a Broadway stage, and you put it on there and it feels completely new and it makes you sit up and suddenly you're brought to Newfoundland. And that's really what we wanted to do. We, we wanted to say, this isn't a 9-11 story. This is, this is about how this town responded to a tragedy. Come with us to Newfoundland and see this remarkable thing that happened in response. Let me talk about the genesis. How, how this all got started. 9-11, where were the two of you? We were living here in New York. Uh, we were actually living at a, a, a residence for international graduate students, uh, and so many of us were waiting for news from down there. And we came together. There was this international community that came together to support each other as neighbors and as friends. And, you know, and on that day, suddenly, none of our differences mattered. You know, we all came together. And then 10 years later, when we found out about this story, it, something about it resonated with us. Because How did you find out about the story? Uh, a friend of ours uh, was starting something called the Canadian Music Theatre Project, and he had actually approached about five or six different composing teams with this idea, and they had all said no. Yeah. And that's exactly what David said. You know, it, it seems sort of familiar to us, like a bunch of people from different countries, different backgrounds. Uh, in our residence, we had people who were refugees. There were refugees out in, Can in Gander. So we just thought, oh my gosh, like, we've seen these images over and over again, the horrifying ones, and we've kind of forgotten, like, what it was like in terms of being somebody who was waiting for news and being someone who was taken care of by someone else while we were expecting the worst. And we just fell in love with the stories that we heard and with the way the people of Gander and the surrounding towns and towns across Canada looked after people who were stranded there. Talk about the, the investigative process, if you will. All right? I've, I've seen and heard you talk about that and how extensive and extraordinary it was. It involved the 10th anniversary gathering yeah. at Gander. So we started rabbit holing on this and we found out there was going to be a commemoration ceremony happening on the 10th anniversary and all of these come from ways, that, mm -hmm. uh, which is what the... I love the term, they yeah, come from ways. Yeah, That's the who they are. are. Yeah. yeah. So they were all returning 10 years later, which says a lot about them. I mean, it's a hard place to get to and it's far and it's 10 years later, and that enough says, you know, what the friendships were like, that they had endured that long. And we would talk to people for hours, and everyone had thousands of stories. Every story was better than the next one. And after talking to people for hours, they would invite us back to their houses for dinner. Then they'd invite us to stay with them. They, there was this one couple that literally said, here's the keys to the house. Just, we'll see you later. And we were like, 
we don't know you. <laughs> How do you distill these stories into, on stage, 12 actors and an amazing set, how you did it, how chairs are, are such, they're not just props, but they're part of the experience in, in some ways. How did you figure out this is the way we have to do that? There's just so much ground that we cover, and, and like literally, like, you know, we're in a, a town hall, we're on an airplane, we're in the hold of the SPCA, we're in a classroom. You, you know, there's not time to switch sets in and out, and it's, it's just always best, I think, sometimes for theater to leave it up to the, the audience's imagination. It feels like Newfoundland somehow. The Newfoundlanders have gotten through their terrible winters by having kitchen parties, and, and it basically means, the, you know, when the snow is up two stories deep, they dig their way out to each other's kitchens, they all bring instruments because they all play instruments, uh, and they sing songs and they tell stories, and that's how they get through crises by coming it's together. Actually, you did get that feel. You felt like you were in a hangar or yeah. a gym or, or something. It wasn't an elaborate setting, but it's a setting that took you where you needed to be. What takes an audience and doesn't just entertain them, but makes them become so invested in this story? I feel like there's never a bad time to tell a story about human kindness, particularly right now when our news feeds are filled with anger and division. It feels like us and them constantly. It, it feels like a story about people from all walks of life, from all over the world, actually coming together and actually overcoming their differences. So this story tells you that real people in a true story responded with kindness and it, it reminds you, it reminds us that you can respond with kindness to these events and you don't even have to wait for a tragedy, you can just respond with kindness every day. And it's a unique type of bravery that we don't often yeah. see celebrated and it's a, a unique type of intelligence yeah. Yeah. which in terms of responding to a tragedy that we don't see every day. Well, it's great storytelling, it's great messaging, essentially it's it, what makes up great theater. I know you're proud of it. You should be very proud of what the work that you've done uh, and, and what people take away from it. So uh, just a pleasure talking you with you. And, you too. and as we said, one of the most enjoyable theater experiences ever. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Be well. And a reminder for you folks, come from away now in its third year at the Gerald Schoenfeld Theater. For more information, you can log on to metrofocus.org.